talk to him. So maybe you're like me and the other day, you're just sitting at home minding your own business. You go on the X, the Twitter, and you see Tony Khan is lighting things on fire. Not literally, but he got, well, a lot of people on all sides and everything in the wrestling world pretty upset for what he was responding to and his overall behavior. Tony, Tony, you need to, you need to stop. Dude. So Raj Giri posted this on X on January 8th saying these guys do have history. Seth Rollins defeated Jinder Mahal in the tournament finals to become the first NXT champion. USA Network then replies saying, what was the cage match rating? A little dig there at Mr. Tony Khan, who in his previous media scrum talked about how cage match is data and analytics that he looks at closely to see who got like the top performing matches. Now to pause there for a moment, there's no problem with that. There's no problem with wanting to go on cage match and you know, you're running a wrestling organization in North America and maybe you want to see like, how are the matches ranked and shows and how do you think the really, really small niche audience of that feels about your matches and your shows and your product. If it were me, I would probably, if I'm owning a wrestling company, I may not focus on that or maybe even say that in a media scrum. I might focus on like our ratings or how much revenue we drew or ticket sales and talk about those things or focus on that data, not websites. So anyways, USA Network, whoever's running that social media department, by the way, what? <laughs> I gotta know who that person is. So USA Network is sticking it to him. Tony Khan then decides to reply, which I didn't know that Tony Khan would be following USA Network. Why, why would you waste your time doing that? But anywho, one of the tweets was in reply, well, in reply to the cage match rating was, a moral victory for USA is one win more than their world title challenger, Jinder Mahal, has in the past 364 days, because it's been literally a full year since he won a match. You really put AEW in our place, getting Jinder Mahal in a big match on your TV show. Do it more often. So Jinder has been like within this year. He's been in NXT and he had the promo segment with The Rock. And then he got up in Seth Rollins face and they're going to have a title match on Monday Night Raw between Jinder and Seth. So we all know how that's going to go. Seth's going to win. It's a challenger on TV for Seth to get a win. They've given, they've given Jinder some spotlight, which I appreciate. I like Jinder. I think Jinder's good. But Tony Khan seems to have a big problem with how for the rankings and, you know, what what's their win-loss record and that they've, they've put somebody who has had no matches and they're putting them in a world title match. So this then sparks the internet to go ablaze on all of this from both sides people looking at it and saying well so and so has won and lost so many matches people coming to wwe's defense people coming to aew's defense the tribalism wars and then there's a lot of in between as well but tony continued tony wasn't done there yet no uh he says a double standard hook 28 and one career record on winning streak calls out the champ a logical challenge sparks online outrage. Let's pause there for a second. So Hook, it's again, a fine wrestler. He's doing good work. 28 and one career record, fantastic. Good for Hook. Challenging Joe, I wanna see that match. Before this happened, I was like, cool. I wanna see Hook versus Joe. I wanna see how that goes. I think it would be cool to see them try to put submissions on each other. I think it'd be a fun match on TV. I haven't seen a lot of Hook lately. I, I'm, I, he was like, I remember it's Jack Perry match. I don't recall Hook being on other matches on pay-per-view. I'm not trying to disparage Hook or any of it. I'm just pointing out what Tony is trying to illustrate of like Hook is on this crazy win streak and he's getting a title shot. So he's trying to put over the fact that the win-loss record matters a lot. Look at our guy who's got 28 wins and one loss and this guy's had like one match in a year and he's getting a title shot over here. Tony. It doesn't, it like, l let's talk for a second. It doesn't matter, you make it up. Like, it doesn't matter what the win-loss record is. You can justify a title match for anybody through storytelling. Whether Hook has a 28-1 record and on the, in the other company, Jinder Mahal is challenging for the World Heavyweight title and has, like, no record on main roster for the last 
year like in 2023 it, it, it doesn't matter and i have seen other outlets and people have talked about how like focusing in on the match record from where i'm sitting it's irrelevant it doesn't matter it's not really what this is kind of all about this whole conversation is really fundamentally about because people started bringing up other examples of other wrestlers having win-loss records of different things abaddon was one of them they talked about how they had like the fatal four-way match and then they got a title match and the both sides looking at that to me it's not really about the win-loss record here and we'll talk about more about tony khan's like whole perspective on this stuff in just a second but he continued on in his tweet saying jinder has literally lost every single match he's in for the past year immediately gets title shot where is the rage hashtag AEW dynamite tomorrow on tbs which is he just always plugs his stuff and it's just hilarious sometimes like you're completely angry about this but let's pl let's plug uh, dynamite on tbs the thing with this second part of him talking about jinder and getting the title shot and he's saying where is the rage I guess he's trying to point out, hey, internet, why aren't you upset that on the other wrestling show with the other company that you're not showing that you're upset that someone who has had no win record or anything is just shoved into a title match on their program against the world champion and you're not online screaming and shouting about how this is ridiculous. I guess he's trying to imply that when it comes to AEW and his company that fans show more anger or more they're more vocal about how the booking is of why this person is getting a title shot over this person and so on but the thing is to back up for a second the match record thing that Tony is pointing out they started AEW with that Cody would highlight it the Bucks Tony they would talk about as AEW was becoming a television product and they were launching it I remember very clearly that they were talking about leveraging and using data and using the match statistics the win-loss records and how win-loss records were going to be an integral part of AEW and determining who's going to get title shots opportunities and going for a sports presentation I definitely I remember them talking about this and very quickly that went away and it's been gone for the better half of what you I mean you tell me like two years do they sometimes sometimes they'll bring up the win-loss record sometimes it's almost like to use it to get and motivate a story or to motivate why somebody is getting a title shot and stuff and that's fine that's totally fine from where I'm sitting motivate the stories great you want to motivate with the win-loss record fantastic you want to motivate it because it's like a grudge match great motivate stories but they started AEW with the win-loss record and really emphasizing it they really did and it's a cool concept but from where I'm sitting that as a concept also can be detrimental because it books you into a corner in my opinion because then you're always locked to this thing whereas if Hook as an example does have the best record in AEW overall because he racks up wins on like Rampage and Collision or whatever he's like number one contender and then he should be the most powerful wrestler and be the world champion but I know that's not the case like that's not how it works and so I I think fans Tony should not be focusing so much on this whole situation with Jinder Mahal and Hook and pointing out the win-loss records because to me that's not what it's really about to me it's really about Tony's behavior and as the president CEO general manager head of creative that he likes to put on his business card <laughs> runner of the shows coming out online to just vent to USA Network social media that they're they're jabbing they're having a little fun with you and you go in the other direction and you take it personal and you start going off about it and of course wrestlers and pundits and everyone online is giving their two cents on it and it's it's great to see other people's opinions one person i thought that made a a good point or raised a good point here was jonathan coachman the coach he replied with the moral victory tweet that tony messaged he replied to this and responded by saying we also used to get amused at fans who counted wins like wrestlers earned them hell if Vince wanted I could have been world champion but the storyline didn't support it it's about the story clearly not wins in a predetermined space thought a boss would understand that now what do you think about coaches comments here for me this is kind of what I'm talking about it's not about win-loss records 
And it certainly shouldn't be about what the other company is doing. Why doesn't he go after TNA? Why doesn't he go after New Japan for their booking? Why doesn't he go after smaller promotions? Like, why are you going and trying to combat a global organization like WWE and putting any spotlight on them? It doesn't matter, nor does it help you. How does any of this help AEW? Does it get their hardcore fan base riled up? Probably. It gets certainly gets the internet talking for a couple of days. Cool, but not in a good way. Not in a productive way. We want to talk about the great storylines and, and matches that are happening across all of wrestling. WWE and your Ring of Honor, your New Japan and AEW shows and everything else that you like to watch. It's wrestling, but I feel like Coach makes a good point here of like, it's a predetermined, it's a show. Try to put on the best show you can. And the show is about telling those stories in the ring and outside the ring and motivate them and captivate the audience and hold your audience and grow your audience. Yeah, Coach could have been in a title match. Might have been at some point getting a title sh shot for whatever storyline reason. But tomorrow or today, I guess, because it's Wednesday, you know what that means. Tony Khan could just book eight title matches on a show. He could do whatever he wants. But to just highlight like, oh, it's the match, it's a win-loss record. Why aren't people outraged on this with Jinder doing this on this show? Why even give it the time of day? And there's more to this. And like we talked about Abaddon getting the title match and how that went. Uh, people were focusing on this too. Or Mikey online said, Tony forgets that he literally gave Abaddon a title shot after being off AEW TV for over a year. The same exact situation as Jinder. Eric Bischoff chimes in and talks about, hey, Tony, is it true or is it a bot? And Tony has to reply to Eric Bischoff saying, no, Bischoff, not true at all. Abaddon returned to AEW+, then they won a four-way match on TNT against other great wrestlers to earn a title shot, which is completely different than someone going a full year, losing every match they're in, plus getting a title shot without a single win. Reading would be your friend, Eric. So like, I go back to this, it, it's not productive. What does it help Tony Khan getting into an online disagreement and confrontation with Eric Bischoff and other people just on the internet? It doesn't help anybody. You're splitting your audience. You're not really, in my opinion, you're also not doing yourself any favors when it comes to your team with the staff, with the wrestlers, with your company, because you're the head. He's the head of his table. And to me, it doesn't show very good professionalism and that it doesn't really show that you're leading. And what I mean is like, it gives people permission that work for Tony, other wrestlers, to do whatever they want and say whatever they want and react however they want online. And maybe Tony doesn't care about that. Maybe he doesn't care how anybody speaks and you know, within the umbrella of AEW, and if they want to go off and, and, you know, interact and confront other people and all that stuff, maybe Tony doesn't care. That's fine. Like, do whatever you want. But I'm just saying that, like, if you're the president of the company and you're going online and you see a social media for account for a network for the competing company, take a little jab at you. Why engage it? It's not going to do any good. I also saw like Dustin Rhodes, for example, a lot of wrestlers were chiming in. I saw Corey Graves chimed in with this. Rhea Ripley did too, I think. Uh, other wrestlers, AEW, Dax Harwood, like people were coming to their defense of AEW, WWE, Jinder and, and Hook and all this stuff. And that's fine. Like, that's fine. Yeah, it's it's your team. Protect your team. But like Dustin Rhodes tweeted out, for example, guys, just enjoy wrestling. We'd love to do it for you. Lighten up on the tribalism. 100%. But I think, and I looked at the responses to Dustin Rhodes coming, I love Dustin Rhodes. And I looked at the replies to all of this and the overwhelming consensus was, we love wrestling. Your boss is the one that really should stop doing this. And your boss is the one kind of leading his tribe with the pitchfork and going headfirst into the crowd. We should lighten up on the tribalism. It's wrestling, have fun, enjoy the product, go to the shows, buy a t-shirt, watch it every week, do what you want. But when your boss is the one standing there and negatively engaging online, it sets a bad precedent and a bad tone. And this isn't the first time Tony Khan has acted like this. And if you're a wrestler that works for AEW, what then stops you tomorrow for going online and getting into a feud online of words with another wrestler from another company 
and bashing competition profusely every single day. What stops them from doing that? And they could say, and then they could tag at the very bottom, go watch Dynamite. Like, is that what Tony Khan's messaging is? Is that what he wants from his wrestlers, from his product? So to me, it's, it's not about gender. It's not about hook. It's not about the win-loss record because it's wrestling and it's fictitious and it's a predetermined storyline and matches and it's a product. And as a fan, as a big wrestling fan, it's showing me, it's telling me that the owner of this company is spending a lot of time online and looking at what people are saying about him or about AEW and ready to respond to that and I think just sitting here, I'm like, wow, this guy's got a lot of time on his hand where he can just be tweeting all day and night and during Dynamite when the show is actually on and he should be probably sitting there in whatever gorilla position and taking care of the matches and the flow and he is just tweeting out a storm. I sit there and go, man, this guy's got a lot of time on his hand for someone who's has a lot of hands and a lot of different companies and products and a lot of wrestling shows. He seems to have an awful, um, good amount of time available to sit online and go back and forth with people and it doesn't it doesn't matter in the end enjoy the gender Rollins match on raw let's see what storyline comes out of that let's see the hook and Joe match hope it's great looking forward to it but at this point I really think Tony just needs to stop comment below what do you guys think about all of this and what are your overall thoughts of it? If you like videos like this, talking in depth, then hit subscribe and hit a like on the video. That helps a lot. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye.